back to my channel and welcome back to another DIY video. A couple of things. First off, I'm sorry I have been away for a solid week. At first I wanted to skip out on my Tuesday uploads in favour of Blackout Tuesday, Black Lives Matter and promote black voices and voices of people of colour um, and not just my own voice. Then I had a really bad flare up with my body and then I couldn't film but, but now that a week has elapsed I do want to get back to my regularly scheduled programming and to show my support for Black Lives Matter I'm going to leave the links in the description below on where you can donate to Black Lives Matter and also where you can find some other resources but I will be donating money that I make off my videos and Patreon money to the Black Lives Matter movement where I can. I'm not the wealthiest person in the world but I'll make any donations that I can that won't interfere with me being able to pay my bills. But on to today's topic. Now, I wanted to make a video on how to make those book bag purses from, I think it's like Killstar, and I think maybe some other brands do that we are no longer shopping from. <laughs> that was cool. Um, but I have the issue that A, books are really super duper heavy. This is one from Edgar Allan Poe, and it's about the size you would need to make a decent book bag. And this is really, really heavy. The other issue I had is that it's not accessible for everyone. Not everyone has the time or even the wrist muscles to be able to cut through pages and pages and pages of books and the other issue i had is that i don't know how to join it shut when it becomes bag so i had another idea or i took the outside of a book and turned that into a bag which i filmed and it didn't go to plan at all i still have it and it looks cute but it's definitely not what i wanted so then i remembered that you can get metal books that are like safe space storage. So I had a look for a safe space storage book on Amazon and I couldn't find one that would stay shut. Then I thought about maybe a decorative storage book, like a paper one, which led me down the rabbit hole of this. This is a wooden book shaped hinged box. And I got this from the works, it's seven pounds, and they all shot online because I've never seen one of these in the workshops near me before and it's got a really big capacity it's lightweight, it has a clasp so it will close shut and it's just all around the best option for this DIY but the good news is this one is going to be quite simple and for only £7 I'm sure it's going to be a lot cheaper than the original so let's get into it shall we? for this DIY you will need, obviously you're going to need your book box also, you're going to need a bag chain. This one I picked up from the charity shop. You can also make a bag chain out of chain you have lying around the house, but I picked this up for a pound at the local charity shop. And then also rip my hair out with it when I'll try and put it on. Also, you might want to filigree or decorative pieces. These are all pieces that are left over from my DIY The Disposable when we did the DIY jewelry box. So this is all left over from that, but essentially it is box decoration pieces that you put on the edges of an item that you wish to decorate much like this. I've got all some different shapes and sizes. I'll see if I can find the original link, but I did purchase these a very long time ago. I've also got paint, this is plain black paint. It's actually house paint, but it'll work for what I need it to do. White paint or silver paint. I'm still not sure how I want to do the lettering on this, if I am going to do lettering. This is a quick dry varnish, and this is a clear matte one. Here I have basically what is knockoff Ezex Thousand glue. It's a multi-purpose adhesive then paint brushes of all different shapes and sizes and a white pencil so I can mark out my design and last but not least masking tape. Um, you can also use sandpaper if your book has extra rough edges. Now I've already given it a sand but it's up to you if you're using a wooden one or a regular one but that's also optional if you want to use it and then if you're going to be making a chain you might need things like wire cutters and chain but I don't need any of that so let's get into it. I also forgot to add, you're probably going to need a drill because you've got to drill a hole for your bag loops. That might, might be helpful to have as well. You will also need a ruler. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mask off all of the detailed hardware on this. Now I could totally just take it out, but actually it's going to be harder to mask off than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to take off, off, the, off the pieces because I can't be asked to mask them off. Now I'm going to put this somewhere where I won't lose them, otherwise I will lose them and I'll be looking for them for ages. So. And now I'm going to lay something down behind these so I don't get paint everywhere. I'm going to use this old canvas because it's got, um, it's basically like a paint canvas, 
and it is just used for this kind of thing. I think it's the perfect size. So I'm going to crack open my paint, which is actually home paint, but it will do the same job. And then I'm going to hit this with a couple of licks of paint, and God knows how long it's going to take, so. So this, this one is dry, and put it to one side, but this one is mostly dry, except for those two spots. So I've been looking at a couple of images online, and you can really do this as intense or not intense as you want it to be. I'm trying to remember which way around this goes. So I've been looking at a couple of reference photos online, and I'm going to use that as the basis for making the front. So this is the front. What I want to do is I'm not very talented or in any way, shape or form, but I do want to make a simple border around the outside. And I know I want to use these corner pieces. I'm going to use some E6000 glue. I'm just going to glue these pieces on and I'm going to put it on the bits where it shouldn't exactly leak through, but it should dry clear nonetheless. So I'm just going to add all these little corner bits to all the corners on this. So guys, now that this has dried, in terms of what font I'm going to do and what words I'm going to do, I'm going to be using a runic inspired font to do the wording on here, but I'm going to let this dry out a little bit. But to practice my fonts, I am going to use the back piece because I can just paint over this and no one will ever notice. So I'm going to start out by taking a white pen and my ruler and just marking out where I want it to go. I think I want it to be it. I'm going to do spell book, so I want to find the midpoint, which is... So book, the middle letters are O, so I'm going to do O's. No, we're not doing that on top, we're doing spell on the top. The E is the middle letter of spell, so we're doing E on the middle. It should look something like this, but obviously I'm not using this bit, it's just a practice, so I'm going to wipe this off, paint over it and let that dry, and now the original should be dry, so we can give it a go on that one. So my aim on the actual piece is to make as few lines as humanly possible, so we want to start out by finding our midpoint. So I did the words on the front and I didn't like it so, plan B. Looking back at it now I like the words as I'm going to go back and change that. If you like it too follow these instructions. So I think I'm becoming more resolute in the idea that I do not possess enough artistic skills to make this look like fancy or anything. So I might just resort to gluing one of these doodads on. Maybe this one, I'm kind of leaning towards this one. I think it might look nice. It doesn't look, doesn't look some of the inspiration photos. So I'm going to measure this middle point that you can't quite see. Actually, no, you can probably see it better than I can. That middle point is where we need to glue this, and that is where the hole in the centre should sit. So I'm going to get my glue, and I'm just going to pop some glue along the whole backing of this. Then, in the meantime, I want to create my holes. So I'm going to draw my holes on the side, and probably around here-ish, I'm going to mark that out, I'm going to measure it as well. So now that I've drilled those holes in the side, using my bag chain, I'm going to, if you can see here, it's like a little jump clasp, and then a bigger loop. I'm going to push open the jump ring that holds it together, taking off the other ends of the chain. Put the chain through the hole we just made. And then reattach it to the jump ring. And that means it ain't gonna go anywhere. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is reattach all of the bits together, starting with the clasps that go here. Now I was gonna give everything a quick coat of varnish, but then I realized that the one I have has a nasty habit of leaving a white residue over everything that I tend to varnish with it. So I'm not gonna do it to that just yet, but when I do get a varnish that doesn't give a weird residue, I will varnish the whole thing just to ensure it stays nice. Okay. 
So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it interesting, entertaining, informative. I hope you enjoyed the DIY. I have been wanting to do DIYs recently, like this little hair bow, but I've had the unfortunateness of having a really, really bad flare up recently and it's getting really bad. So I wanna do stuff that doesn't involve me using too much of my hands. I do have a couple of videos coming up though. But guys, a huge thank you to our patrons because without them, videos like this are not possible. Also guys, a huge thank you to you guys for staying safe, staying dark, staying in, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.